a drastic change took place in the world of biology in the year 1977. And that change has revolutionized how we look at the emergence of life and how we look at the history of life itself on this planet. This is a real strong evolutionary tool. Uh, and uh, if, if some, and if you didn't have the bacterial signature, you just weren't bacterial. And the same for eukaryotic. And I, it took me the better part of, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm being kind of 10 minutes to say something's wrong here, something's wrong with prokaryote. And that's when I started deconstructing. He was a real eye-opener. So, it, also for me, but also for the other people, of course, it's, his, his uh, work was uh, groundbreaking. It was so novel and, and uh, gave so much excitement also to my science. So what does then the emergence of life look like using these brand new tools of molecular phylo phylogeny? Well, one of the first ideas is that in the very early Earth, the Earth had a, a, what we call a prebiotic soup. It had all kinds of chemicals uh, on the Earth's surface um, at high temperature um, that ended up in, um, being some of the com components that were used uh, of the building blocks of life, but really life hadn't taken a foothold and emerged at that time. So, so before we had life, we call that the prebiotic soup. <clears throat> then the, 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 the concept that is derived from using these molecular tools is that we initiated the formation of some of the molecules of life, including RNA, including perhaps partial pieces of viruses, uh, some other small molecules that are required now to build complex cells, but we didn't have cells at all. We just had some of the molecules that make up cells. And some people have called this the, the naked RNA planet, where we had these molecules moving around in these, 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 these chemical soups, if you will, um, at the very early stages of life. Well, the next thing that happened in the, in the process, again, using this molecular phylogeny, is that some of those molecules became more complex. And the RNA itself, the composition of some of these other lar molecules became larger, but we still didn't have cell walls. Or if we had cell walls, they were very different from the kind of cells that we think of now. And so that's been called the progenote. The progenote is, again, we haven't moved to a point where we have cells as we know them now, but we've gone from a primordial soup to molecules that are in cells that are free-floating without having cell walls to having some loose affiliations of cell walls that aren't at all like the cell walls we have now and some of the more complex molecules. And that progenote stage was very important because uh, without cell walls, that means that all those molecular components were all free flowing between everything that was merging towards cellular life as we know it. Then a really dramatic change took place and that was called the, the Darwinian transition. And the Darwinian transition is when cell walls actually formed. So cell walls went from a, a proto-early loose stage to a, a real cell wall as we know them now. And at that transition, at that Darwinian transition, then the cell walls captured these molecular components. And at that moment, then we had the genesis of the three domains of life. And that's what was described in the 1977 paper by Wos and Fox. That was three domains of life are called eukarya, which are the groups that we're part of. These are the, the more complex, often multicellular organisms, although some organisms can have one cell that are eukarya, and the, we use the word microbe to describe that. So the word microbes can be any type of single cell organisms, but many of the eukarya have multiple cells. Then another branch that was very closely related to the eukarya are called the archaea. These are the small cells, again, about one micron in diameter, but these are very unique. They don't have any kind of a membrane about around the internal molecules of what we call the nucleus in the middle of the cell. And they're also the organisms that, among other things, can produce methane, which is very unique in terms of the different types of life that are on this planet. The other branch that came up at about that same time out of this Darwinian transition we called the bacteria. We're familiar with these in terms of humans becoming sick. Um, and these were also organisms that were one cell, and they did not have a, a formal nucleus or membrane around the middle part of the genetic components of the cell.